Okay, before uh, jumping to uh, equilibrium price, uh, there's one final uh, piece that we need to clear is the market supply. Like very similar to the market demand, the market supply uh, basically comes from or is de derived from the individual firms' uh, uh, supply uh, functions. So if you remember, well, first off, we're going to talk about short-term market supply now, and later we're going to talk about long-term supply curves. Uh, they are usually different, all right? You know, the, their structures are different, and, and you know, how we generate them are different. So here we're talking about short-term supply, market supply curve. So remember from our producer theory, uh, we had a profit-maximizing firm facing uh, a market price in a competitive market P and we for simplification assume that this firm uses two inputs uh, capital and labor and these are the input prices R for rent and W is for wage and so with these two inputs you know this profit maximizing firm is producing some output so let's assume that this individual firm is producing QI units of output as a function of market price and the input prices. Well, in a market environment, there might be more than one sellers. And in, in fact, in a perfectly competitive market, there should be more than one sellers. So therefore, let's index the sellers by I from one to M, all right? Well, there we can get the market supply curve Again, it's going to be a function of price, function of the inputs. Well, here we, for simplicity, assume that each uh, firm is facing the same input prices. And obviously, because we are talking about perfectly competitive market, each firm is facing the same output price, P. So the aggregate supply, all right, aggregate supply or the market supply is nothing but summation or the aggregation of the individual supply curves or the individual supplies, all right? Well, if you remember, um, the individual supplies are in a perfectly competitive firms. Uh, let, let, let me take it back. In a perfectly competitive market uh, for a profit maximizing firm, the, the optimal quantity is basically determined by quantity by this equality, QI equals to marginal cost. Remember? So, well, why is that? So, well, if you remember, we said the profit of an individual firm is going to be market price times the quantity this firm is producing minus the cost, right? The cost of this firm. Well, what is the profit maximizing quantity? Well, it's simple. You basically take the partial derivative with respect to quantity and then set it equal to zero. So the first order condition. Which means when you take the partial derivative of the revenue, P times QI, remember P is a fixed number because in a perfectly competitive market, everybody's taking price as given, meaning Q, uh, P does not change as you change your quantity, all right? And hence, P is like two, three, some real number. So its derivative is simple, it's just P. Well, what about the derivative of minus? What about the derivative of cost? Well. We don't know, we need to know the, uh, the cost function, but we know what we call uh, the derivative of a cost function. We call it marginal cost, remember? So the first order condition means set it equal to zero and solve it. So therefore, price has to be equal to marginal cost, all right? Uh, so what I wrote here is uh, misleading, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry for this. Um, so, that means if you are a profit maximizing firm operating in a perfectly competitive market, you must produce QI units of output such that, now I'm going to write the correct version, uh, the market price is equal to marginal cost of producing this output. All right, so this is uh, the correct uh, way of writing it. So whenever the market price is equal to the marginal cost of producing some, so there is some sweet spot of output level where the marginal cost is going to be equal to the price. So that's the exact amount of quantity you would like to produce. And if the market price changes, obviously you're going to change your quantity level again according to this equality, right? So what does that mean? That means uh, the marginal cost curve, so usually we have uh, the cost 
All right, so I'm going to drop this I thing, uh, this subscript. So the cost is an increasing function of quantity. All right. Um, so that means it's, it's either increasing in this fashion or maybe increasing in this fashion or maybe increasing in this fashion. Doesn't matter. Well, what about the marginal cost? Well, the marginal cost uh, is the derivative, right? Uh, the marginal cost is basically the derivative of the cost function with respect to quantity. So, you know, if, if, it is, if the cost function is linear, your marginal cost is going to be a flat line. If it is an increasing in a convex fashion, your marginal cost is going to be an increasing function. Well, here it's going to be a, a sort of, uh, so the, the, the derivative is, as you see, is a decreasing function. So anyway, but most of the times, because we assume decreasing returns to scale in technology, all right? Once again, because we assume decreasing returns to scale in technology, uh, we usually assume that the cost function is, is, is increasing in a convex fashion, which basically means that the marginal cost curve is also an increasing function, all right? Is, is it linearly increasing? It's increasing in, in this exponential fashion? I don't know. It, totally depends on the cost function, obviously, but the marginal cost function is also an increasing function. So that means if I put uh, the quantity here, and this is the, oops, cost. So this is what, you know, a standard marginal cost function will look like. So remember, the for any market price level, the individual firm is going to produce exactly the quantity level that basically matches marginal cost with price. So if, for example, the market price is at this level, uh, well, the firm is going to look at his mar its marginal cost curve and will say, you know what, this is exactly how much quantity. So let's call this P1. So this is exactly how much quantity I should produce. Well, what if the market price decreases for some reason? All right, so P2. Well, then in this case, the firm is going to say, hey, you know what? Uh, for this price level, the profit maximizing quantity is this much, Q2, and so I should be producing this many uh, quantities. All right? And obviously, if price increases, uh, the quantity will also increase and so on. Well, here, obviously, uh, this is a short run uh, sort of decision, right? I mean, uh, the, 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 there might be some uh, f fixed cost, and so if there is a fixed cost, uh, you can't really, or some, if some parameters are fixed, so you can't really change those parameters. And uh, so we call this as a short term. Um, but if uh, you can change all the variables, all the input levels, all the capital levels, um, you know, maybe you need to build additional factory to increase your quantity level. And so it requires, I don't know, more than a year maybe. And so uh, meaning every variable becomes a choice variable. Uh, so this time period is called uh, long term. All right. So uh, in, a, in a short term market supply, therefore, we have uh, the short term marginal cost curve equals to price, and that is going to give us the uh, optimal quantity level. And hence, remember, this QI is basically uh, the marginal cost curve, right? I mean, so this is the price level, this is the quantity level. So this is nothing but the supply curve, right? So this is the QI. This is why I sort of put that QI thing. I mean, mathematically, they're not equal, but you see what I mean. This is the uh, supply curve, supply curve. Maybe I should leave it uh, that way. All right. So, well, the question is from the individual firm, how do I go to the market supply? Well, simple, I'm aggregating them, right? If there are hundred firms with a similar technology, all I have to do, just add them up. All right. So for any P2 level, I'm going to look at how many quantity firm one can produce, how many quantity firm two can produce. And therefore, I'm going to do this for all the firms and then add up all those quantities. So therefore, for price level P2, say uh, I can produce total thousand output. I'm going to do the same thing for P1. I'm going to do it basically for all the prices. And hence, that's how we get the market supply curve. But nevertheless, because the individual firm's supply curve 
uh, or the marginal cost curve is, is a short run marginal cost curve is increasing well then the uh, the uh, market supply curve should also be an increasing function all right so on the horizontal axis I have quantity of supply on the vertical axis I have price so for reasons of uh, notational simplicity instead of talking about you know quantity of a particular good or, or you know I'm gonna ignore the uh, uh, input prices so what I'm gonna do basically I'm gonna sort of uh, put my supply curve on a Q versus P plane uh, but that means I am fixing the income prices and obviously technology all right so one more thing uh, before I close this section is the following so it's true for both supply and the demand curves uh, if you remember from principles or intermediate micro there were two notions uh, movement along the supply curve or movement along the demand curve versus shift in the supply and shifts in the demand curve so how is it possible and when is it possible well particularly when we talk about the market supply remember the market supply is derived by fixing input prices and technology so the technology is not explicitly appeared on the supply the QI uh, but it's implicitly there right because remember the optimal cost function uh, I mean remember the production uh, chapter the optimal cost function and therefore the marginal cost does in fact depend on the technology or the production function of the firm so therefore implicitly when we draw a supply curve of an individual firm or the aggregate market supply we are fixing input prices that these firms are facing and we are fixing their technologies and so we only vary the market price and see how the total quantity will change with that so that means if the market price increases from this level to this level well what happens is that the quantity supplied will move from this level to this level or basically we move along the supply curve from this point to this point however when for example input prices change or when the technology changes it actually changes the supply uh, the marginal cost curve but hey here's the thing these graphs I mean this one and this one this is for individual firm this is for markets both these uh, firm, um, graphs are are, 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 are uh, pictured or drawn on a plane where on the horizontal axis we have quantity and on the vertical axis we have cost where is the input prices it's nowhere in this graph so that means we are fixing them so these are kind of level curves okay so don't forget that in fact the supply curves are like I mean at least in our very simple environment where we had two inputs to create the output well our supply curve is actually a function in a three-dimensional space and so I have three sort of uh, parameters variable the price for capital price for labor and the market price so then the if I want to draw the supply curve I actually need uh, I mean this is a plane and I actually need a four-dimensional graph right the three dimension is the uh, is for price P R and W and then the fourth dimension well I mean I am I don't know why I'm doing this because well, this is not really a fourth dimension so the fourth dimension is the level of quantity supplied so to be able to draw something like this I need a four dimensional space well obviously I can't do that so what do I do I fix R and W so I basically reduce the number of variables to one instead of three so therefore I put P on the uh, sort of vertical axis and then I look at the quantity on the horizontal axis and see how they are related but again these are level curves when I mean uh, when I say level curves 
uh, it, it's misleading. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm taking it back. These are not really level curves. But what I'm doing is I am drawing those functions for fixed value of R and W. Once I change R and W as well, obviously the graph should change, but because I'm changing parameters that are never appearing on this graph, what is this change going to do? Well, it's going to shift the supply curve uh, to the right or maybe to the left. Well, that depends on the, you know, how I'm changing those prices. If I increase the prices, clearly it makes sense that the supply curve is going to shift to the left because now it's more costly, all right, because the marginal cost curve is going to be higher, right? I mean, uh, sort of for any fixed price, now I would like to produce less quantity because everything is more expensive. But if the prices decreases, well, then probably it's going to shift to the right. If technology improves, meaning it's now easier to produce the same amount of quantity with less amount of input maybe, well, then uh, the supply curve is going to shift to the right. So it's not movement along the supply curve, but it's shift of the supply curve. Exactly the same stuff going on for the demand curve, uh, but I'm not going to do sort of uh, the demand curve uh, version of this. I believe you already talked about the su supply demand shifts and movement along those curves in intermediate and or in principles courses. So I'm going to skip the details, uh, but I just wanted to underline that uh, the, the reason of the movement along the curve and shift in the supply demand curves comes from the fact that all these market cur uh, demand and supply curves are derived from aggregating, summing individual uh, firms' uh, 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 optimal or optimization decision. Okay?